This is Kanye West. He is quoted as saying that his only regret is not being able to see himself perform live on stage. I used to think that was the most arrogant thing I had ever heard. Until I saw this guy. This is Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most popular scientist. His quote is as follows. Science is true whether or not you believe in it. A lot of scientists feel this way. If they put their stamp on it, then it is an absolute fact. Here is one of their absolute facts. The coelacanth fossil record. Mainstream science said without a doubt that this rather unattractive fish and all others like it went extinct 70 million years ago. Every scientist in the fields relating to this fish was convinced that this was true and would have staked their careers on it if asked. All the scientists in question were absolutely 100% put in a certificate you can frame wrong. Why were they wrong? Well, this coelacanth was caught off the coast of South Africa in 1938, and it wasn't a fluke. Since then, they have been found in Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, Madagascar, just to name a few. I can assure you without a, do a doubt, this fish here has not been dead for 70 million years. How did science screw up that badly? They saw the fossil record and stopped looking for the truth. Science is only true until the day that it isn't. Why is this so important? Meet Brian Cox. Brian Cox is an astrophysicist out of the UK. He is the second most popular scientist in the world next to Neil Tyson, and he hates flat earth. Brian Cox hates it so much that he is in complete denial of it. He won't even acknowledge it exists. He states that it is not a thing now, that everyone here and at other conferences don't really believe in it, and that Flat Earth was never a thing. It's just a myth or a legend, and that no culture anywhere ever believed in it. Brian thinks this is an absolute fact. I find that interesting, because there were a great many cultures that first looked at the world the same way, and they all drew the same images. Let's rattle off some of them, shall we? Greek, Navajo, Babylonian, Mesa, Japanese, Persian, Viking, Indian, Mayan, Incan, Hebrew, Australian, Chumash, Slavic, African, Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Norse, Hindu, Masonic, little tip, when a secret society draws the world a certain way, you might want to pay attention. Islamic, Roman, Egyptian, Aztec, Arabic, all of these large groups saw the world like this. One I enjoyed more than most was made about 500 years ago in the Netherlands by a man named Hieronymus Bosch. It's called the Garden of Earthly Delights and it opens to show a paradise inside. Interesting trivia about this piece, a replica of it hung above the childhood crib of Leonardo DiCaprio. This will come up later. So it's 2019 and I'm in a room full of people and flat earth is a thing. If I would have said those words to you even five years ago, it would have been considered the most extreme fringe science fiction. But today the term and ideas are almost commonplace. So how did we get to this point? How did Flat Earth make it this far? How did we get here? It is one of the most unlikely tales you will ever hear, with plot twists that would make Hollywood writers blush. But as I am fond of saying, the truth is often stranger than fiction. None of what I am about to tell you is secret information. Anyone can look up the record of what happened. But if you don't, I can assure you every word of what I'm about to say is true. On February 10th, 2015, I created the first of what ended up being the Flat Earth Clues series. And as some of you know, did not think it would gain traction. I put my name and phone number out in the first video because apparently I enjoy abuse. 
I practically begged people to call me up and prove me wrong so I could get back to my sleepy little life in Boulder, Colorado. Almost immediately, I was set up upon by people who wanted to know more. The emails started pouring in and the phone calls came at all hours of the night. Podcasts wanted to do interviews, students wanted details, and so did a lot of people making videos on YouTube. Rob Skiba called and wanted to debate me. During the show, you could feel his mind racing with new possibilities. After the second show, True Frequency Radio contacted me and asked if I would like to do a program of my own to talk about Flat Earth and spread the word. And 2015 continued like that, a true grassroots year for Flat Earth. More channels dedicated to destroying the globe model appeared and the entire conspiracy world took notice because it was and still is the most hated and most polarizing fringe topic there is. Professionals from different walks of life began to come forward. From the American military, we had a Navy missile instructor, an Air Force navigator, a Marine Corps sniper instructor, a Navy submarine chief, an Army artillery radar operator, an Army master gunner, an Army air traffic controller, a Navy navigator, and a Navy electronic warfare technician. From the air, we had an American flight instructor, an air traffic controller, commercial airline captains, commercial airline co-pilots, and from the ground we had an industrial engineer, corporate travel agents, large project surveyors, and many others. As 2015 drew to a close, the topic had started to expand its different facets, discovering new ideas almost weekly, and enthusiasm was high even though mainstream news viewed it as just another internet flash in the pan. They couldn't have been more wrong. At the beginning of 2016, a Grammy-nominated rap artist named Bobby Ray Simmons Jr., known professionally as B.O.B., released a new single called Flatline. The song was unusual for two reasons. The first was that it included a long audio clip from astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson as he described the Earth as being pear-shaped. The second was that it implied that the scientist was taking government money to hide the fact that the world was indeed flat. This is when mainstream media first took notice, because it was new news. This is something they had never seen, and even before the media could fully digest the concept, the scientist in question did the unthinkable. He fired back. For reasons that continue to remain unknown to us, the leading face of mainstream science decided to make an appearance on Comedy Central and then do a monologue against rapper B.O.B. on why the Earth isn't flat. He used no animations, no graphics, and made a point to use profanity at the end while symbolically dropping the mic on the topic. With the help of his nephew, Neil Tyson even made a response rap song. The effect it had was, well, flammable. It was, without a doubt, the most interesting story to start off the year and helped fuel the emergent flat earth topic in social media. Between the two people involved, one in the music industry and the other in science, there was no way the average media editor could ignore it. The mainstream exposed ordinary people who had never looked at a single conspiracy to the simple words that now echo everywhere, flat earth. In droves, the general population searched for the reasons why this was a headline, and they were pulled into the rabbit hole from which few can escape. And if you think that's the strangest thing to start off the Flat Earth world in 2016, you would be sorely mistaken. Leonardo DiCaprio visited the Vatican, and guess what he brought up on camera? Flat Earth. Being an A-list celebrity only gets you 15 minutes with the Pope. Did he talk about climate change? A little bit. Did he bring the Pope an art book showing the world as an enclosed structure and how it represented the promise of the future? Indeed he did. After Leonardo left, the Pope left the Vatican and flew to Cuba to meet with the Orthodox Pope, the first time the two had met in a thousand years. We don't know what they talked about, but after he left... The Orthodox Pope went straight to Antarctica, one of the hot buttons of the Flat Earth community. Who else went to Antarctica in 2016? Secretary of State John Kerry, for one, and even though it might not sound strange to you, it did to me, because he was there on election night, when he should have been back in the States backing his candidate, Hillary Clinton. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin was also there in 2016 and had to be emergency airlifted for health reasons. We can only speculate on why all these high-profile people went to Antarctica, and it still to this day raises many questions. 
The very first Flat Earth Video Award Show was also in February of 2016. Yes, there were already so many Flat Earth videos that we were starting to give out awards. By April, Flat Earth regional meetups were appearing. The first were in Houston, then Seattle, and after that, in just about every state you can imagine. And this wasn't just happening in the United States. Across the pond, Dave Murphy from the UK had already made the first Flat Earth appearance on Macedonian television. By August of 2016, I started keeping track of the numbers and the sheer volume of videos that the topic was helping create in social media. We weren't just an anomaly, we were a bona fide trend and gaining speed every month. As 2016 drew to a close, we were a cool club that had gotten some solid attention, but the future was uncertain, sometimes even precarious. Not for long, within a month, all that would change. In 2017, like a sign from the heavens, someone had carved into a hillside in Los Angeles, Google Flat Earth. Even now, this person responsible has never come forward. That very night, basketball star Kyrie Irving announced during a podcast that he believed in Flat Earth, and the day after that, LeBron James, the most popular face in American basketball, supported him. I cannot overstate the shockwaves the Flat Earth was creating in the sports world. Every periodical in the world covered this story immediately. Then, the general media dived in. Over the next few months, it was the water cooler topic. The crossover media was surreal. This is a Rolling Stone article about Jimmy Kimmel and Dave Chappelle on late night television discussing Kyrie Irving and Flat Earth. The word was now spreading quickly across multiple levels of media. To add to the fire, NBA Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal supported Kyrie as well during a live broadcast, but only stood by it for 10 days. Turns out some of his sponsors weren't thrilled with the idea, so a hasty late-night talk show retraction was put into place. The UK program Big Brother kicked off a member for harassing someone who believed in Flat Earth. The Canadian comedy team Trailer Park Boys did a full skit on the topic, and the year was only half over. Regional meetups were increasing every month. Denver, Boston, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Florida, Hawaii, Canada, London. Our first formal debate was in Atlanta. And as 2017 entered its final months, there stood the crowning achievement, the first Flat Earth Conference in 500 years. It might as well have been forever. An ancient truth made new again, simply by brave people believing in it. International media flew in for the unique event and were amazed by the conviction, the passion, and the sincerity of all people involved. The largest YouTube channels in the world were now wading into the Flat Earth pool. This is a slide from PewDiePie, which features Patricia Steer and what can only be described as Shrek. Late night talk shows were taking shots at us monthly. Who the hell was Freddie Flintoff? I didn't know, but apparently he was talking about Flat Earth over in London. HBO, Vice, ABC, BuzzFeed, German television, Russian television, British television, Hustler magazine, university classes, radio stations. The last day of 2017, rapper B.O.B. was preaching Flat Earth to Bill Nye the Science Guy. That same week, Kyrie Irving was using Flat Earth in his shoe commercials, and still, mainstream science thought we would just go away. So... What did we do in 2018? We changed gears. If some is good, then more is better. More meetups, not just every month, but almost every week. I had to build a special playlist on my YouTube channel, and there are now hundreds of regional meetups on it. You would think at this point that nothing could surprise the media when it came to Flat Earth. They had already seen a rap battle between a Grammy nominee and the world's most popular scientist. Then they watched the sports world openly debate the shape of the world. What other rabbits did Flat Earth have in its hat? Well, this for one, Mad Mike Hughes. A California stuntman put a giant flat earth sticker on the side of his homemade rocket and literally launched the topic to a new level. Did it prove flat earth? Not at all. Was it covered again and again in social media as the launch was delayed twice? Yes, it was. In 2018, there wasn't just one flat earth conference. There were three, one in the US, one in Canada, and one in the UK. All different, all fantastic. We now had dedicated venues where we could share our ideas and experiences. 
just before the first Canadian conference, the first mainstream documentary on the topic, defied all expectations and competed in 22 film festivals in seven countries. So many showings that the producers could not even begin to attend them all. Before the year was out, it would be purchased by Amazon, YouTube, iTunes, and Netflix. And during all this, the numbers, the precious stats that I love, reached for the impossible. In June of 2018, Flat Earth, which had started at a modest 50,000 search results, had hit 20.9 million. The cherry on top being that the President of the United States was sitting at 20.8 million. And somewhere along the line, the powers that be decided that we were getting a little too excited. The U.gov survey said it all. Americans were now starting to lean towards Flat Earth too quickly for their taste. Indeed, a full third of young Americans didn't believe in the globe anymore. YouTube took matters into their own hands and tore down their own scoreboard so that we would stop pointing at it. Google went before the United States government and said that they were doing what they could to deal with the flat earth problem that kept spreading, but secretly still loved us because we kept people watching YouTube, now the largest television network in the world. National Geographic tracked some of us down and condemned the Flat Earth movement as being a danger to medicine, a threat to technology, and had the potential of sending science back to the Dark Ages. I thought they were being a tad dramatic, but they did have a point. We weren't going away, and they knew it. Behind the scenes, they told me that it concerned them that science wasn't meeting us on the battlefield. They were hoping they could rally some of them to engage us. It didn't work. Science did everything they could to avoid the topic, to pretend that it wasn't there and that people weren't listening. Shane Dawson, one of the largest channels on YouTube, made a single Flat Earth video in 2018, and it now has 32 million hits. Shane's demographic is under 20. What is science going to do to stop that? Nothing, because it's not a real topic, remember? It's nothing when Jaren and Globebusters and Karen B and Effie Corps convince people with long distance laser tests. When Rob Skiba does weather balloon tests. When Jay Tolan Media does daytime infrared photography. Don't worry about it as we look at boats that refuse to go over the horizon, as we turn heads with street activism. There's a group called Globe Lie who already finished a town to town tour in the UK, and in 2019, continue and extend it to all of Europe. We're just getting started. 2019 is the year of Flat Earth Conventions. This year alone, we had events in Los Angeles, New Zealand, Calgary, Stockholm, UK, Amsterdam, South Carolina, Brazil, and Dallas, Texas. Every month I hear the globalists say that Flat Earth is fading away. This is the cover of Newsweek from June of 2019. And this is the cover of Popular Science today. This is my message to science. What is Flat Earth? You'd better figure it out quick because we're bringing the fight to you. We've become one of the most trending topics in the world with almost no resources and we did it in four years. We can break down your space videos, your images, and you'd better believe we're going after your theories because that's what most of them are, just theories. Now we have an army, channel after channel, rising to six figures in YouTube, Jaronism, Rob Skiba, Celebrate Truth, Controversy 7, Red Pill Philosophy, ODD Reality, and the five figure channels I've literally lost count. Channels dedicated against NASA, channels dedicated to experiments, channels dedicated to debates against globalists, channels dedicated to activism. So many different facets, it feels more like a school than an invasion force. But doesn't that make sense? Because every great army has an academy behind it. And we've created one from the sheer volume of our online content. Make no mistake, Flat Earth University is very different from other universities based on scientism. They will tell you that we are on a tiny rock flying through an impossible universe and that your life means virtually nothing. We will gently remind you that this incredible world and everything on it was built just for you because you are special, valuable, and unique. They will tell you that science is true, whether or not you believe in it, to never question the status quo and never revisit old theories. We encourage people to not take our word for it, but instead do their own research and question everything. 
They will tell you to abandon your religion, your faith, because it has no place among scientism. Flat Earth University makes no such religious demands. Whatever your faith is, keep it, because the very nature of Flat Earth implies that it was built, which means by default that there is a creator. And the great thing about Flat Earth University is that you can take courses from anywhere, anytime, at your own pace, no matter what your occupation or lifestyle is. There are no exams, and we have thousands of instructors all learning from each other every day. We don't just inform people of new observations, we open minds, and when they are open, that enthusiasm becomes infectious. Flat Earth isn't a theory, it is part of the Great Awakening, one that will eventually define our civilization and our legacy. In closing, I'd like to remind people of my mission statement. My name is Mark Sargent, and I'm a proud Flat Earther. It is my addiction, my unhealthy obsession, and next to my dear mother, it is my favorite thing in life. It is everywhere, just waiting for you to discover it. The people involved are kind, sincere, and most importantly, open-minded. I'm hoping that you will find what I have, knowledge, truth, and love for each other, the way this world was always supposed to be. The globe is dead. Long live Flat Earth.